Hi, it's Emma here. Um, welcome to this video from Festin Architecture about hatch and line types. We're going to just explore some of the basics of using hatch and um, how you can insert new line types into your drawing. Um, so let's get started. Uh, first of all, we'll look at line types. You see I've got three um, simple lines here. Um, and let's assume we would like to change one of these to, for example, a dashed line. Um, when we look over at our properties palette on the right hand side here, um, we can see we have an option uh, for line type. At the moment that line type is selected by layer. Um, now in some drawings you may find there are hundreds of different line types um, already set up within the drawing, but in this case uh, we don't have that. So we're going to have a look at how we can um, load some line types into the drawing. So I'm going to type in line type. And this brings up the line type manager. As you can see, there's literally just um, simple single solid lines um, currently loaded into this drawing. Um, so we're gonna look at adding a new line. So I'm gonna click on this little plus button here. Um, and these are all of the line types that are available to us. I think they just generally come with um, AutoCAD but aren't necessarily loaded into the AutoCAD templates. Um, so straight away we can just select any of these. So I'm going to just pick this first one and I'm going to click Add. So this has now added that line type to our drawing. It's not added it to um, any of these lines yet. We'll do that in a second. So I'm just going to click Save. I'm going to select a line and I'm going to go over here and select the line type. And instead of it being by layer, I'm going to change it to this um, new line type that we've just loaded. And you can see it's changed it to that line type. We can adjust this um, by changing the line type scale. So for example, if I change that 5 to 10 and press enter, you can see the dashes have become slightly more spread out. If I change it to 20, same again. So there, those are the kind of alterations you can make to your line type. You could also um, have layers set up that are assigned different line types. So if I just open up my layers palette here, um, let's say we wanted to put in a new layer, I'll call it line type dash. Just amend that so you can see it. Um, so at the moment that line type is um, assigned a continuous line. We can change that to um, the dash line. So now if I put this line here onto the line type dash layer, um, all being well, it should turn it into a dash line. Um, and yes, it has done that, but as you can see, um, it's done it at a line type scale of one, which is why it's quite difficult to see. So if we just amend that line type scale to 20, we can now see that it's put it on the line type dash um, layer with the dash line, um, and it's also taken on the color of that layer, which is red. Um, so Another thing you can do um, with these line types is load them directly from the properties manager as, as opposed to um, opening up the line type manager as we did. So let's select this line and let's say we want to show it as um, insulation. So we will go over to the properties palette, select the line type and click manage and that will take us into this um, small sort of line type selection box. As you can see um, the insulation line type isn't here so we click load. And then we scroll down and find the one we're looking for, which is batting. Um, it's worth mentioning here, if you've downloaded um, some sort of line type from the internet or perhaps a client or a colleague has sent you a line type that they want you to use in a drawing, you can save that um, somewhere memorable uh, on your computer. And at this point, you can then click this little uh, menu button here and you can actually load it um, from within your documents. Um, but I'm going to stick with this one here and I'm going to click add. I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to select that that we've just added and slightly adjust the line type scale. And there's the um, insulation line type. You can stretch that and it will adjust accordingly, which is really handy. OK, so moving on to hatch then. Um, you can see I've sort of made these shapes here that we can have a little mess around with to show you how you can do certain things with hatch. So I'm going to select the hatch layer because it's red so you can see what I'm doing. Um, so for a simple hatch, you can just press H for hatch and enter. And you can then select the object um, that you want to fill. Or the other option is um, to pick a point. But we'll start with select object, seeing as that's what's come up. I'm going to select this rectangle 
and it's automatically going to fill it. Now we've got options here. At the moment you can see it's filled it with a solid colour. If I pull this little arrow down here I can click on hatches and it will bring up a little library um, of all the different hatches available um, within this drawing. Um, so let's have a look at changing that to something else. Um, I was going to have a look at the brick hatch. Um, so I've selected that here. As you can see, there's no change. When, whenever you do things like this and there doesn't appear to be any change, it's always worth checking the scale. Um, so I'm going to amend that to something different. So I've put in 100. As you can see, now we can see that there is actually some sort of pattern in that hatch. It's not just a solid fill. Um, I'm going to amend it to 50. And now you can see that that's very simple brick style hatch within a rectangle. I'm going to press enter. Okay, a different option is um, to press H for hatch again and instead of um, selecting the boundary if we wanted to uh, hatch this area here we can select pick point and I'm just going to click within that box. So I'm going to click here you can see that's filled that area but it hasn't filled the hatch within. I'm going to press enter. Another thing you could do though, um, if perhaps you've hatched something and then realize you want to remove some of that hatch, is if we've hatched a boundary like this um, and you thought, oh, hold on a minute, I want to remove this hatch from within the inner rectangle, you can select the hatch and click select boundary and you can add the inner rectangle to that selection. Press enter and you can see it's now removed the inner hatch from that rectangle. So that's quite handy to know. Likewise, if you then feel that you want the hatch to be back in that rectangle, you can select the hatch and remove boundary. So we'll remove that inner boundary, press enter and it puts the hatch back inside that rectangle. So that's a handy little trick there. Um, so another thing you can do, press H for hatch, I'm going to select the object. You can have um, a solid hatches as you've seen. You can assign a colour to that solid hatch. Or you can put gradients into your hatch, which here you have the option of amending the colours. And here we have the option of amending the style of gradient you want to use. Um, this can be useful. I don't say I don't really use it all that much, but it is handy to um, have it as an option. Um, so I'm going to close that down. Let's look at some of the other options that are available for um, working with hatch. So as I've selected this here, you can see we also can amend the rotation. So I'm going to type 45, and you can see it's amended the hatch rotation to 45 degrees. We've already looked at um, amending the scale. Now. Another thing we can do is sort of hatch around objects and around circles. So if I type H for hatch, I select this rectangle. As you can see, that's not how we wanted it to work because it's just hatched everything within, within that rectangle. So how do we get around this? So instead, I'm going to click undo. I'm going to click H for hatch. And instead of selecting the boundary, I'm going to choose the pick point option. And I'm just going to pick the point within the box but it will ignore the circles. So that's quite useful. We can also hatch multiple items in one go. So I'm going to press H for hatch. Um, when the hatch box comes up, we need to make sure that we are not selecting a pick point, but selecting a boundary. Um, this will then enable us to draw a lasso style marquee around the um, objects that we want to hatch. It takes a little while to get to grips with this. Um, you draw a box around it, and then it's hatched those objects. Um, this is really bright, this blue. Um, so that's quite a useful option when you have lots of things you want to hatch in one go. So I'll just quickly show you how to do that again. Um, you press H for hatch as normal, select your boundary rather than selecting a pick point, and then draw your lasso around the boxes. You can see I've missed one there. Um, that's better. Uh, so that's another useful tip for working with Hatch. So there's a few tips on working with uh, different line types and working with Hatch. Um, hopefully they have will prove useful to you. 
Um, thanks very much for watching and I'll catch up with you soon.